Have you ever looked up at the night sky and wondered if we're alone in the universe? Well, so far Earth is the only place we know of that supports life. But that doesn't mean we can't dream big. Today we're exploring the mind-blowing concept of terraforming. Transforming another planet to make it habitable for humans. We'll set our sights on two of our closest neighbors, Mars, the rusty red world, and Venus, the scorching inferno. We will also pit them with each other to see which one is the better choice. In the end, we will declare a winner and also understand the future of terraforming and how it will help us in future space explorations. Hello and welcome to my channel Beyond Earth, your portal to the cosmos. Before I begin, this video is divided into chapters. We will start with why and how of terraforming and current challenges after which we will pit Mars and Venus with each other. In case you want to jump into the planet Smackdown, you can directly go to that chapter. Let's begin with the first one. As we mentioned earlier, Earth is pretty awesome, but it's not invincible. Here are some reasons why setting up shop on another planet might be a good idea. Future-proofing humanity. Asteroids, climate change, volcanic eruptions, these are just a few existential threats we face. Having a backup planet with a breathable atmosphere and habitable conditions could ensure the survival of our species. Scientific advancement. Terraforming would push the boundaries of human knowledge and ingenuity in fields like biology, engineering, and physics. Imagine the incredible discoveries we could make while trying to transform another world. The pioneering spirit. Humans have always been driven to explore and colonize new frontiers. Terraforming would be the ultimate act of exploration, allowing us to create a whole new home amongst the stars. So, how do we tackle the challenges of transforming these alien worlds? Here are some ideas that scientists are exploring. Introducing greenhouse gases. On Mars, we could introduce greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane to thicken the atmosphere and trap solar radiation. This would create a warming effect, gradually raising the temperature to a level where liquid water could exist. Mining ice, extracting water ice from the Martian poles or underground reserves would be a priority. Water would not only be a valuable resource for human life and plant growth, but it could also be electrolyzed to produce breathable oxygen, giant sunshades. For Venus, the challenge is to reduce the amount of solar radiation reaching the surface. One idea involves deploying giant sunshades in space at a special point between Venus and the Sun to block some of the sunlight. Genetically engineered plants, introducing specially adapted plants that can thrive in the harsh conditions on Mars or Venus could be crucial. These plants could help produce oxygen, remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, and even create organic material to enrich the soil. Terraforming sounds like something straight out of science fiction, and that's because it pretty much is. Here's a deeper look at the hurdles we'd need to overcome. The technology doesn't exist yet. The concepts we discussed are fascinating, but we're still far from having the technology to implement them on a planetary scale. We need major breakthroughs in areas like large-scale atmospheric manipulation, robotic construction in harsh environments, and sustainable energy production to power these terraforming endeavors. Time is a factor. Think millennia, not centuries. Terraforming wouldn't be a quick weekend project. It would likely take thousands or even millions of years to significantly alter the climate and atmosphere of another planet. This raises questions about maintaining funding and societal interest over such a vast time frame. Unintended consequences? Playing with the delicate balance of a planet's ecosystem is risky business. Introducing new elements or altering atmospheric conditions could have unforeseen consequences. We could end up making things worse, creating a situation even less hospitable than what we started with. Careful study and simulations would be essential before taking any large-scale actions. With that out of the way, let's look at the contenders. Both Mars and Venus orbit the Sun at what is called the habitable zone of a star. The Sun's habitable zone stretches from just beyond the orbit of Venus and just about encompasses Mars. 
Let's begin with the battle. There will be five rounds, and winner of each round will get one point. Let's go. First up, distance from the sun. Mars sits comfortably in the habitable zone, a sweet spot where temperatures are just right for liquid water to exist. It's about 1.5 astronomical units, or AU, away from the sun, receiving a good dose of solar radiation to warm the planet. Venus, on the other hand, is the solar system's hothead, sizzling at a scorching 0.7 AU from the sun. This proximity blasts Venus with intense heat, making the surface temperature a deadly 462 degrees Celsius, or 863 degrees Fahrenheit. This round goes to Mars for having a more temperate location. Let's talk atmosphere. Mars has a thin atmosphere, mostly composed of carbon dioxide, or CO2, with some dust particles. This CO2 could actually be helpful. We could use it as a greenhouse gas to trap heat and raise the temperature. Venus, though, boasts a super thick atmosphere, which is 96% CO2. While it might seem like a good starting point, this dense atmosphere creates a crushing pressure on the surface, like being deep underwater on Earth. Additionally, the runaway greenhouse effect on Venus traps immense heat, making it the hottest planet in the solar system. Removing all that CO2 would be a monumental task. This round goes to Mars again for having a more manageable atmosphere. Here's a twist. Venus is a heavyweight champion compared to Mars. It has about 81% of Earth's mass, while Mars is a lightweight at just 15% of Earth's mass. This mass difference translates to gravity. A planet with stronger gravity can hold on to an atmosphere more effectively. While Mars would need some help keeping its atmosphere from being blown away by solar winds, Venus's gravity wouldn't have much trouble retaining a new, thinner atmosphere. This round goes to Venus for its advantage in gravitational muscle. Day length is important for life as we know it. Here, things get weird. Mars has a day cycle very similar to Earth, with a day lasting about 24.6 hours. This means a familiar cycle of light and darkness for any potential life forms. Venus takes the cake, or should we say the rock, for the strangest day length. It takes Venus a whopping 243 Earth days to rotate on its axis, which means a single day on Venus is longer than its year which is only 225 Earth days. Imagine a sunrise that takes over two months. Not exactly ideal for life. This round goes back to Mars for having a more Earth-like day cycle. Okay, imagine cranking up the thermostat. Mars needs a significant temperature increase, but not an impossible one. The average temperature on Mars is a chilly minus 63 degrees Celsius or minus 81 degree Fahrenheit. To make it habitable, we'd need to raise the temperature by about 50 degrees Celsius, or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Venus, on the other hand, needs a serious cool down. We're talking about dropping the temperature a whopping 462 degrees Celsius, 863 degrees Fahrenheit. Even with advanced technology, this would be an incredibly challenging feat. The last round, too, goes to Mars for the less extreme temperature change required. Let's tally the points. Mars wins four to one. While Venus has the mass advantage, Mars checks most of the other boxes. It's distance from the sun, a thin atmosphere we can work with, and a day length similar to Earth all make it a more realistic candidate for terraforming. Is terraforming a pipe dream? Maybe not. While completely transforming another planet might be far off, here are some reasons to be optimistic the pace of technological advancement. The rate at which technology is developing is exponential. Things that seem impossible today could be routine tomorrow. Breakthroughs in areas like nanotechnology, artificial intelligence, and bioengineering could revolutionize our ability to manipulate planetary environments. Small-scale terraforming. Even if full-scale terraforming is out of reach, we might achieve some level of planetary habitability through more localized efforts. Building enclosed habitats, or terraforming domes, could allow us to create sustainable human settlements on Mars or Venus, without having to change the entire planet. Stepping stone to the stars. The knowledge and experience gained from terraforming attempts could be invaluable for future space exploration. Learning how to manipulate planetary environments 
would be a crucial skill for colonizing other planets beyond our solar system. The idea of terraforming another planet is both daunting and inspiring. It pushes us to think beyond our current limitations and imagine a future where humanity can spread its wings across the cosmos. What do you think? Is terraforming a crazy dream or an inevitable step in our future? Leave a comment below and let's discuss. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more space adventures.